Hello everybody. Today we are going to be exploring the heat treatment of rubies. I've got a batch of rubies here of rather low quality. Um, I don't expect we're going to get any amazing results out of these just due to their quality. But I want to see if we can get results. So, as you can see, these are pretty bad. Uh, nothing but cracks. Um, very purplish, um, a lot of purples and blues, and some like these are barely even recognizable as rubies. One of the characteristic things you'll see out of a ruby is their shape. They come in hexagons. Um, you know, that's part of a much larger crystal that gets bigger. Another thing is that they fluoresce under a UV light. Uh, I can turn out the light here. When you put a UV light on them, they fluoresce. Some of these fluoresce much better than others. Using a UV light is one of the fastest ways to find rubies in a whole group of rocks. Uh, just for the simple fact that most rocks don't fluoresce under UV. And these are really easy to pick out when you're looking amongst essentially a bunch of gravel. So we have rubies of all different sizes. Um, you can see this one was part of a much bigger hexagon. So what I'm going to do is pick out rubies of a few different sizes, a few different qualities. Um, well, they're pretty much <laughs> all low quality, but I'm going to pick a few out of, of various sizes and then I'm going to clean them off with a, with a brush as best as I can to give us the best, best chances. Uh, once I get them clean, we'll throw them in the kiln and see how they do. So I picked out the ones I want to try to treat, and they're all still a little damp for me washing them, but I want to get a, a before look. This is the one I have the highest hopes for. And you can still see it's still in its hexagon, and it's a pretty long length of crystal, and it has some sort of rock around it, some sort of other substrate, but I'm hoping that doesn't affect it too much. We'll, uh, we'll throw it in and try it out. I'm going to take a look at each one of these. so we can get it before and after. Some of these are really small, but I wanted to see how that affects things. This is a really pretty one as well. That milkiness that you see in this, that is what's referred to as silk. Uh, it can be desirable in some instances, especially if you have a star ruby, um, but the heat treatment at too hot of temperatures will remove that. So they, I say they, uh, rubies are often heat treated first at around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit so that uh, it can remove a lot of the dirt and impurities without removing that silk. But once you start getting hotter into the uh, like 2300 degree range, uh, that silk goes away as well. And here's what the cleaned rocks look like under UV. I had to remove it off that paper towel. Uh, the UV light and that paper towel was blowing out the camera. But as you can see, even this big rock, this big ruby fluoresce is pretty well. So here we are at the kiln. I have a brand new clean crucible that we're going to use. Um, we'll put the rocks in there. No, I'm not going to use any sort of flux or anything like that. Um, I'll crank it up. Unfortunately, uh, the thermometer on the pyrometer on this had quit working years and years ago. Um, I mean, it moves the needle, but it's essentially just to tell if it's on at this point. So we're just going to have to check it periodically and see how they're doing. Okay, well, we will stick this in here. This is what they look like going in. Okay. Now we wait. 
Okay, so this is after about an hour and a half. If I had to guess, it is probably sitting at around the 22 to 2300 range. So it's been three hours since we put these rubies into the kiln. Uh, it is looking quite toasty in there. Um, what we're going to do is turn this off and let it sit. And we're going to let it cool down nice and slow in here so they don't crack or anything further. So here are the rubies. After they're taken out of the kiln, they have cooled off. And uh, they certainly have changed colors. These sat at about 23 to 2400 degrees for a few hours. It wasn't quite enough to fuse the cracks, as you can see. I don't think I'll be able to do that in that furnace or in that kiln. But it did make some of these weaker, as you can see this this is falling apart. Um, most of these though got much lighter. Like this one. And it did clean them up. It, it took a lot of the uh, impurities off the surface. This one kept a, a nice color. One thing to note after sitting at that temperature they fluoresce significantly more. I'm not sure how well this camera is picking it up, but they are much, much brighter. The next thing I'd like to try is either getting a furnace that can get hot enough to fuse these cracks or get some leaded glass and put these in the cruise pop these back in the crucible and see if we can get rid of these cracks like this thing is just falling apart now. I mean it structurally this thing is about done. I bet you I can break it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. So, that's something to keep an eye out. If you take it up to those temperatures, and you're not doing a glass fill, this thing could just fall right apart on you. And it is all ruby. If you shine the, the light on it, it all fluoresces. So now we know what happens whenever you heat treat rubies at about 23 to 2400 degrees for a few hours. It certainly does treat the color and does remove a lot of impurities. It does make them weaker, however, and uh, the colors get much lighter if you're relying on those blues and purples to, to deepen them up.